Hello, my name is Lundy. My pronouns are they, them. It's wonderful to be with you today. My grants team briefed me on the heart of this video and we thought, why not do something unplugged where you could hear from me, the founder and CEO of Kessid Wellness and uh, cover the, the heartbeat of what you're looking for. Um, I am drinking Earl Grey tea. This is actually a tea bowl my ceramics professor made in college. I'm an art undergrad and I'm a therapist by training. I'm a licensed therapist um, as a place I started in mental health and I believe mental health is a human right. And, and what I learned entering the field as a therapist is that the industry is led with scarcity when it could be led with abundance. And over time, I learned that mental health therapy is unaffordable for most, whether you have insurance or not, and especially the marginalized. The number one population in the US that is uninsured are Spanish speaking homes. Now, there's an underbelly to this story that doesn't often get discussed that I think is the key to innovation, the, the node that can ripple out into the margins. And that's burnout among therapists and why systemically that occurs. Why the majority of the industry is white. Why it's so expensive to get continuing education and specialties that are needed more than ever, particularly by diverse therapists for diverse communities. And so really the heart of Kessid is this imagination that we can create an environment where therapists can work with the underinsured and get paid above median rate and have support and supervision and training for free that equips them um, to be able to do this sustainably for themselves because the therapeutic relationship is the greatest predictor of client outcomes. And so when the therapist is doing well, they can show up in the best way for their work with clients. And we have 87% completion rates for our contracts among therapists. Um, and we have increased diversity among therapists over 20% in the last year. And that has also been reflected in increased diversity among our clientele. And so what we see is that when we do mirror our experience, one of the things that broke my heart as a non-binary person when I entered the mental health field is that um, there weren't many therapists that looked like me. And yet, the non-binary and transgender communities experience astronomically higher suicide rates. How can we create innovation for clients by reimagining innovation for the providers? And so on the client side, we created the Affordable Therapy Program, which is a fixed rate program um, that charges $60 a session hour when industry rate is $135 a session hour. And we created a general pro bono program where 10% of our sessions are free for those who cannot afford it. Um, and I had my mom in mind. <laughs> I was raised by a single mom for much of my childhood. And what I would have given for her to be able to get the mental health support she needed for free while she was trying to support two young children and herself. I also was raised in an environment where the religious community existed to support the local community. But something that had always been on my mind is that um, religious spaces, particularly churches, sent empty most of the week. And so what I learned in mental health is that overhead is one of the most debilitating costs for employers. And so what if we partnered with communities that have appropriate space for therapy rooms to provide therapy within that community during times the space isn't used? So maximizing space in an environmental way. I also want to acknowledge that Kesset has always been paperless. 
Um, that's not something that we talk a lot about, but I think when client forms often average around 25 pages per new client and you're working with about a thousand clients a year um, or more, that's a significant impact. And so I think when you're looking at all sides of regeneration and environmentalism, um, finding partnerships within the community through sites was key. Now, experiences like the, the pandemic have shown us that hybrid possibilities are essential. Um, being able to offer virtual care transcends access barriers. That being said, we still see our therapy site program thriving, particularly in therapy deserts. Parts of the U.S., which therapy deserts account for about 30% um, of all areas of the U.S., those areas usually have higher priority for in-person care because of cultural priorities and values. And they also are places that can have limited bandwidth where virtual care isn't accessible. And so we learned that by leaning into our value of growing through invitation with community leaders from these local communities, we can eliminate therapy deserts um, in consistent and meaningful ways. Now, one of the issues I kept running into is that there's many facets to systemic needs. And so one of the points for therapists that often doesn't get discussed is um, affordable housing for them. Uh, usually in places like therapy deserts, that's a struggle uh, to find. And so um, I see so many ways that we can partner with local communities to create innovation in other sectors where there's a huge amount of need already, like affordable housing um, for the community, and, and imagine how we could do that for therapists. And I also think that there's some possibilities through um, greenhouse principles and multi-family uh, units that we can apply as well to create regeneration um, for both therapists that serve the community as well as the community itself. And so one of the things that we just received funding for through a partnership with a Denver foundation is to start a training program to create um, licensed addiction therapists in Colorado, which is one of the highest needs and one of the areas that lacks diversity. And so um, we are training about a dozen underrepresented therapists led by licensed addiction therapists who identify as underrepresented and um, creating a program that provides about a year of free therapy for 100 participants navigating substance use recovery. And so what we know is that about 85% of KESID clients that start in a pro bono program continue on into another KESID program, whether about 50% of those enter our affordable therapy program, um, and the other remaining 25%, uh, 35% enter into a um, pro bono program or corporate program. And so what we learned is that when you center abundance, when you center generosity, there's a reciprocity, there's a regeneration that happens within the community. And it, and it spreads kind of like a mycelial network. And so one of the final gap areas of community that I noticed was um, within the corporate space, within spaces where um, either there was a lack of insurance coverage, like the hospitality industry, about 70% of the industry is uninsured, um, as well as insured providers or insured employers that could not provide coverage for workers in a way that was affordable to them. Either the workers only had two to seven sessions for free in mental health care and they knew that wasn't going to solve their marital issues or they couldn't afford the out-of-pocket costs to meet their deductible. And so when the COVID pandemic unfolded, I raised a pro bono program fund for the hospitality industry to get free care knowing that I wanted to ultimately create what is now our corporate program that provides free and affordable therapy um, in ways that are sustainable to employers that are either uninsured or understand that their mental health policy isn't sufficient. 
um, as well as workers within industries that are known for a lack of insurance and a huge amount of mental health need. Um, in the places we exist, about 10% of the overall industry is the hospitality industry. And what we know is that about 40% of US residents go through the hospitality industry at some time in their life, often very formative ages of emerging adulthood. And so the corporate program now serves over a thousand workers within the Colorado area. And I am now on the Colorado Restaurant Foundation board um, getting to imagine how we can make sustainable solutions in cross-sector ways that eliminate roadblocks, not only for um, the clients, the workers, but also thinking upstream. How can we support employers? How can we make solutions that feel sustainable for single um, restaurant owners, um, which is most of the areas that we are in? And so what I'm excited for in Kessid's future is how we can continue to um, challenge this scarcity that we know that there's a mental health pandemic rampant in our world, um, rampant in the U.S., rampant in our local communities. And also, people are coming awake to their mental health in all new ways, and communities are wanting to see Kessid spread. Um, we have partnerships in our five states because we were invited to do so. We have 15 partnerships across Colorado because of those invitations as well. We have eliminated two therapy deserts already. And with your help, we can continue to imagine new possibilities through innovative solutions.